Hello everyone, from now we will start Unit 6. Transaction and Concurrency Control. From this unit at least two questions will be asked in exam, which carries 15 marks. In this video, we will study about distributed transaction. Asset properties of transaction. Types of distributed transaction. They are Flat transaction and Nested transaction. Distributed transaction. A transaction becomes distributed if it invokes operations on several different servers. A distributed transaction is defined as a group of operations that are to be performed across more than one database. The operations are performed by multiple nodes that are connected to a single network. It ensures asset properties of the transactions. Now, asset properties of transaction. Here, A means, atomicity. C means, consistency. I means, isolation. D means, durability. At first, atomicity. Either the entire statement is executed, or none of it is executed. This property prevents data loss and corruption from occurring if streaming data source fails midstream. A transaction must be all or nothing. Consistency. Database should be in consistent state before transaction and after transaction. Isolation. Every action processed by a transaction is kept isolated until completion of transaction. Durability. Failure made after the commit phase will not affect the database. Types of distributed transaction. There are two types of transactions. They are flat transaction and nested transaction. We will study these transactions one by one. At first, flat transaction in a flat transaction. A client requests to more than one server. Here, in the figure, T invokes operation in objects in three server X, Y, Z. So, T is flat transaction. A flat client transaction completes each its request before going on the next one. Therefore, each transaction accesses server's object sequentially. It has a single start point and single end point. Now, second one is nested transaction. In a nested transaction, the top level transaction can open subtransactions and each subtransaction can open further subtransactions. Here, in the figure, a client transaction T that opens two subtransactions, T1 and T2, which access objects at servers X and Y. The subtransactions T1 and T2 open further subtransactions T11, T12, T21, and T22, which access objects at servers M, N, and P. In the nested case, subtransactions at the same level can run concurrently, so T1 and T2 are concurrent, and as they invoke objects in different servers, they can run in parallel. The four subtransactions T11, T12, T21 and T22 also run concurrently. In next video, we will study about concurrency control, types of concurrency problems, and concurrency control mechanisms.